Welcome to this overview of the spinal tract. Now the reason this is an overview, rather than a comprehensive breakdown of every spinal pathway, is because there's just so much stuff you could learn about them. So for this I just want to look at the main facts about the major spinal tract. That means some details will be disregarded, exceptions to rules will be ignored, and some tracts won't get mentioned at all. This doesn't mean that information isn't worth knowing. I just didn't want to run through all of it in this video and make both of our brains melt. So with that caveat in place, let's make a start. The spinal cord is a structure that forms the connection between the brain and the body. Inside the cord are groups of nerve fibres that travel along it, known as tracts. Many of these tracts cross from one side of the body to the other, so that each half of the cerebrum controls the other half of the body. Broadly speaking, we can split them into two groups. Descending tracts travel down from the brain and carry efferent motor fibres out to the body. The ascending tracts travel up the spinal cord and relay sensory information back to the brain. First, let's look at the descending tracts in a bit more detail. These motor tracts can be divided into two groups. The pyramidal tracts are responsible for the main motor control of the body and head. These are named because they pass from the cortex of the brain through the pyramids of the medulla oblongata. The extrapyramidal tracts originate in the brainstem and control involuntary and automatic motor functions such as muscle tone and posture. Now for this video I'm not going to say anything else about those extrapyramidal tracts, but if you are keen to learn more about them, I'll add their names and functions in the description below. Instead I want to come back to those pyramidal tracts, because again we can sort them into two groups, some of them synapse in the midbrain before heading to the head, face and neck. These are the corticobulbar tracts. The rest travel into the spinal cord to form the corticospinal tract and are responsible for controlling the muscles of the body. So let's draw these corticospinal tracts out. We know from their name that they must be starting in the cortex and then ultimately heading to the spinal cord. So all of these fibres will start here in the motor cortex and then pass through the internal capsule and enter the medulla. At this point the vast majority of fibres will decuffate, crossing over to the other side of the body before travelling down the spinal cord and synapsing at the appropriate vertebral level. These fibres form the large lateral corticospinal tract and control most of the muscles in the body. The other corticospinal fibres travel down the spinal cord on the ipsilateral side of the body to form the smaller anterior corticospinal tract. These motor fibres have a fairly limited function, controlling muscles in the trunk and neck. These will eventually cross over to the other side of the body, but only when they reach the spinal level that they exit at. So that's our defending tract, but what about our ascending tract? Well for these there are three major groups you should know about. The spinothalamic tract conveys information about crude touch, pain and temperature to the sensory cortex. The dorsal column conveys the more subtle sensations of fine touch, vibration and proprioception to the sensory cortex, and then the spinocerebellar tracts carry proprioceptive information to the cerebellum, giving it the information necessary to help coordinate movements of the body. So let's draw those two cortical pathways out. The spinothalamic tract travels into the cord and crosses over at or close to its point of entry. It then travels up the contralateral side of the spinal cord before synapsing in the thalamus. Finally, nerve fibres pass from the thalamus to the somatosensory cortex. The fibres in the dorsal column enter the cord as before, but travel up the ipsilateral side to the medulla. As an aside, these fibres will be organised based on where they've come from, with fibres below T6 travelling up the medial portion of the column, and any above T6 running along the lateral aspect. As they enter the medulla, these neurons synapse in one of two medullary nuclei. Medial fibres will synapse in the nucleus gracilis, with the lateral fibres synapsing in the nucleus cuneatus. Fibres then head from both nuclei to the sensory cortex. 
we've now drawn out the major tract of the spinal cord. The last thing to do is look at how they might be affected clinically. Now remember, the symptoms of nerve damage will always be distal to the location of that damage. So if a peripheral nerve was severed, we'd lose all motor and sensory supply beyond that point on the same side of the body. However, if the spinal cord was severed, we'd see a complete loss of motor and sensory information below the level of the injury and on both sides of the body. But what if the patient suffered a hemisection of the spinal cord with only one side being damaged? Well, because of the different levels the spinal tract cross over at, they may suffer disassociated sensory loss. The majority of the corticospinal and dorsal column tract run along the ipsilateral side of the spinal cord, so any loss of their motor and sensory function would present on the same side of the injury. However, because the spinothalamic tract crosses over in the cord, injuries to these tracts will present on the contralateral side to the injury. This means the patient should have a loss of motor function and fine touch on one side of the body, whilst losing crude touch and pain responses on the other side of the body. So, that's an overview of the major somatic spinal tract. If you can learn their names and functions, that'll be absolutely fantastic. Plus, if you can, I'd try and have a rough idea of their course through the nervous system, and in particular, where they cross from one side of the body to the other. If you want to review any of the information from this video, I've added a summary in the description below. If you have any questions or problems, please just get in touch. But otherwise, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you soon.